I am a simp for beautiful website micro animations. Today we're going to be making this beautiful hamburger icon using only HTML and CSS. No dirty JavaScript required. Let's get into it. Right, the first thing I want to do is give the body a nice background of just a dark gray. Okay, now we're going to give a container for our hamburger. So we're going to give it a class of hamburger container. And that's just a div. And on that div hamburger container, we'll give it a width of 200 pixels, um, height of 200 pixels, and a background of, let's say a white smoke. I like that color. So we can see the box but it's not in the right position so we want the body to have a display grid and let's place content center so everything's in the center um, but of course we'll have to set the body height to be let's say 100 view H okay that gives a scroll bar so let's do 90 view 90% 90 of the viewport height cool uh, now let's also give this a border radius of let's say 30 pixels so it's nice and rounded there and we can start adding in the functionality so the magic behind this hamburger icon is going to be an input of type checkbox and basically the state of the hamburger icon will be determined by whether this checkbox is ticked or not Okay, and that is why we will not need any JavaScript. Okay, so to be able to select this checkbox from anywhere within the box, uh, rather than just on, like directly on top of it, we're gonna add a label for it. So we're gonna say a label for equals whatever the ID of this is. So let's set, let's give it an ID of menu toggle. So this label is for menu toggle and currently we still can't click anywhere uh, that is because the label isn't filling up the whole width of um, this box so let's give this label a class of menu let's say menu bar container because it will contain our menu bars and on menu bar container let's give it a height of 100% so it fills up the whole box and similar with the width so width 100 percent okay we still can't click anywhere to toggle the input but um that can be fixed by just setting the display to be blocked so it actually does fill up the whole box and now the label fills up the whole white box and we can click anywhere to toggle the checkbox now that that part of the functionality is done we can basically make this uh checkbox hidden so let's set display hidden on that and oh yeah it's display none not hidden all right now what we want to do is start adding in our little bars so let's give a let's put a div inside the label let's give that div a class of menu bar and menu bar is going to be styled like this it's just going to have a height of let's say 10 pixels and a width it's going to have so the width of the whole box is 200 pixels. Uh, the bar we can make, let's say 140 pixels. And let's give it a background of, let's give it the same, actually let's give it a light blue. So now we can see a bar appears, but it's in the wrong position. We wanna vertically center it and also horizontally center it. So to vertically center it, we're gonna change this display to flex. So that's the label and we'll set the flex direction to column and we'll justify content to be centered so now it's vertically centered and now to horizontally center it we're gonna rather than doing a line item center here uh, we'll do left to be 30 pixels over here just because it works out to be nicer this way but and we'll do position absolute but of course, position absolute is going to position it 30 pixels to the right relative to the body. 
Um, so we'll have to do position relative on the containing element, which is the label. Cool, so we've got our meat of the burger. Um, now we need to add the buns as well. But before we do that, let's give this a nice border radius of, let's say, 10 pixels, just to make the ends rounded. Okay, now I'm just going to change this back to... I'm going to change this to a dark grey, actually. I feel that looks nicer. Um, okay, now the before and after elements is what, what we're going to use. Before and after pseudo elements to make the top and bottom bars. So menu bar before and menu bar after. Of course, they won't show up just yet because we need to add the content properties for these. So menu bar after and before. Let's set the content to be an empty string. Cool. Currently, they are kind of overlapping. So on the before one, to shift it upwards, we're going to set the margin top to be minus 40 pixels, let's say. So that should push it upwards. Oh, if I can spell margin. Okay, and we'll do the same for the after one, but we'll push it downwards. So margin top is 40 pixels. Oh, and that should be after. Cool. Um, now, this isn't quite what we expected. Uh, what's happening is the before and after elements are being positioned 30 pixels further to the left um, relative to our middle uh, line. So we just want this left property to be on menu bar itself rather than all of its pseudo elements. Okay, so now we've got three bars, we've got a burger. We just want to be able to sort of move the bars around. So for that, we're going to select, well, we're going to see when the menu toggle is checked, we're going to take the element directly next to it, directly after it, which has class dot menu bar container, but we don't want the container, we want the menu bar itself. So then we'll do dot menu bar. And on that, we'll set the width to be We'll set the width to be zero. So what should happen now is when we click, the width is set to zero, and then it's set to whatever it was before, 140 pixels. So we're gonna do the same thing for the top and bottom lines, except we're just gonna rotate them, right? So this is the before one, this is the after one. Here we'll add a transform of rotate we want to rotate it 45 degrees clockwise, so we'll do 45 deg. And this one we want to rotate minus 45 degrees. Cool, all right. But it's still quite not right because the top one is still shifted slightly upwards and that is because of the margins that we added. So let's just get rid of the margins. Margin top zero, margin top zero. And there we go, that's our basic a uh, little hamburger icon. Let's add a cursor pointer on the label, which was this one, I think. Cursor pointer. So now, yeah, we have a nice cursor pointer. Now, time for the easy bit. Time to animate it. So, for that, we're just going to use the really cool CSS property transition. Let's make a transition. 300 milliseconds and we can choose our favorite cubic bezier which i've already got this website open cubic-bezier.com pretty cool website i'm just going to copy that paste that in there there we go and now look we've got that to be animated um and yeah we're pretty much done now you can sort of play around with this however much you want um for example here 45 degrees we can change that to 45 plus 180 uh, 45 plus 360. Let's do 45 plus 180. So that becomes 225. Let's make that minus 225. And you can see it's a lot more like, it's just a lot more lively now. Um, and another thing I'm going to do, change the background of this container to this nice, where is it? There we go. Cool. 
and that's pretty much done. Uh, this website, by the way, was she codes. They have some. They have some really nice little gradients. You can just you can just copy any of those you like. But yeah, that's it. A nice little hamburger icon using just CSS. No JavaScript required. I hope you found it helpful.